in one of the great mysteries of aviation, pilot Fred Valentich and his Cessna aircraft disappeared from the face of the Earth. In his last moments, he had an encounter with something no one can explain. It is hovering on top of me again, and it's not an aircraft. I every now and then think about what could have happened, and I still draw to the same conclusion. I just don't know. On that fateful day, Fred was just 20 years old, with ambitions to become a commercial pilot. That was his whole passion of flying. He loved it. The last years of his life, that's all he did. He dedicated everything to flying. October the 21st, 1978. At 6.20 p.m., Fred climbed aboard a rented Cessna 182 single-engine plane for a routine flight. A common occurrence in a vast country where light aircraft are a common form of transportation. The plan was to pick up an order of crayfish. The flight should have taken just over an hour. Conditions were good, visibility was clear, and the plane was regularly serviced. His planned route took him over the outskirts of Melbourne, past Cape Otway, to King Island in the Bass Strait. Initially, the flight seemed normal, as Fred spoke to Melbourne Flight Service Officer Steve Roby. Well, he just made a standard position report over Cape Otway with an estimate for King Island. Um, I think he said he was operating below 5,000, and that was it. 45 minutes into the flight, there began an extraordinary exchange. Steve Roby was the last person to speak to Fred. To this day, he's still shaken by the memory. This is a transcript of the beginning of their remarkable conversation. Frederick said, Melbourne, this is Delta Sierra Juliet. Is there any known traffic below 5,000? I said... Delta Sierra Juliet, no known traffic. Seems to me there's a large aircraft below 5,000. I uh, got him to describe the aircraft. It is four bright, it seems to me, like landing lights. Then he said, the aircraft has just passed over me at least a 1,000 feet above. He was describing it doing some fairly strange things. Not Sierra Julia. It seems to me that he's playing some sort of game. He's flying over me two, three times at speeds I could not identify. Steve Roby can recall Fred's fear as if it was yesterday. Just listening to him, I can still remember it distinctly. Um, the way he was speaking to me in a broken communication, a form of uh, hesitant communication, he definitely sounded uh, as if he was under stress. And I could just picture him sort of in the aircraft looking around with this object in the sky. For years, investigators have had no explanation, but a newly released sound recording may hold a vital clue to the mystery. The conversation between Flight Service Officer Steve Roby and Fred indicates Fred was convinced he was being flown over by a mysterious craft. It's flying past, it's a long shape. Cannot identify more than that it has such speed. It seems like it's stationary. What I'm doing right now is orbiting, and the thing is just orbiting on top of me. Delta Sierra Juliet, Melbourne, can you describe the aircraft? It's got a green light and sort of metallic like, uh, and all shiny on the outside. He was definitely under stress. The Delta Sierra Julia, it's just vanished. Frederick then said, so it had reappeared. 
that strange aircraft is hovering on top of me again. It's, it's hovering! It's not an aircraft! He didn't finish that communication. There was all of a sudden uh, a, a clicking sound. Pulsing sort of uh, electronic. After the clicking sound, I called him numerous times and got no response. Yeah. There's no evidence from the transmission of a crash. It's led Richard Haynes to contemplate a theory that's literally out of this world. So the noises on the back of this tape, the metallic sounds, might possibly be the contact of a disc, let's say, or a vehicle of some kind on his airplane. It's rather far-fetched, but we have to consider it as a possibility that he was abducted by um, some other intelligence, some mm, race or species that's capable of doing this sort of a thing. Unlikely as it sounds, Fred's father thought this was a distinct possibility. He probably never let go of the theory that he could have been taken, that maybe um, an outside influence, like a spray craft, come along and, and took him. Like, he never... He wouldn't say that specifically, but I know that maybe in the back of his mind, he probably thought mm, there could be a possibility. Fred's father managed to share these thoughts in a rare television interview. Well, I only can think that uh, if it really being a, a UFO or whatever flying object, that uh, days. Uh, people or whatever creature they are and are much more advanced than us and uh, I could not possibly think they would destroy him. Guido Valentich died in May 2000 without knowing what happened to his son, clinging to the hope that if Fred was taken, he might somehow have survived. Australian air crash investigators still consider the cause of Fred's disappearance not determined. <laughs>